hello hello welcome back to my huge channel everybody today i want to show you some pieces that i got from the most recent collections of jazanda which are incredible and i have fallen in love again and i think you all will and because i think that some of you might be interested in these pieces and in general about jazanda again i wanted to show you a bit of the craftsmanship of these pieces and um, how they look when you wear them um yeah so just let's start and tell me down below what is the piece in your wardrobe that has the most impressive quality or craftsmanship about them that you wear for ages or that you just recently got tell me about it i would really like to know what other brands are there out there and don't forget to subscribe if you uh, like my recent videos where i also talk about designers and stuff so please subscribe and follow me on instagram if you're also interested on in my personal style and how i wear this whole thing on my daily life which i don't since i only sit here in pjs but sometimes i do so have a quick look on that so before i start a short recap of jazanda i know we're all well aware of this brand uh, of the designers uh, they have right now which are the mayas since 2017 and i feel like they have changed the brand and kind of Polish the brand a little bit. I feel like after the Ralph Simmons period of Josanda, the brand was kind of outdated a little bit. Um, I mean, it was again still, I'm pretty sure, extremely good craftsmanship, but design wise, I didn't see um, an explosive amount of good design ideas maybe in the collections. And it has changed extremely, I have to say, since the Mayas have come. And um, these are pieces that I got from the pre-Fall 19 collection and the Fall 19 collection, as I told you. I love to buy things from the runway, but usually I just do not buy them right after uh, they're in the store. So I wait a little bit. And now, as you can see, it's like two years afterwards. And I now I get the pieces that I wanted to have all the time. And as you know, Jill Zander, the brand and their identity and their corporate identity and everything they design is usually based on the fundamentals of being a minimalistic and sophisticated brand. And I think that they um, lived this idea ever since. And uh, what has changed with the Mayas afterwards is um, that it still has this subtle minimalism and um, it still has the core values of the brand which have never changed in the last 50 years I guess but they have changed something and um, this is something very obvious even though it's in the detail in my opinion um, we have this minimalism and the sophisticated design still but on the other hand, it has turned to a very architectural uh, brand. You see that the pieces sometimes look, you know, have this willowy appeal and um, they have a very structural and very sculptural appearance. And um, this is something you cannot find on many brands. And this is also something that I find very distinct about couture, for example, where you have these floating dresses and even, you know, the basic items like the blouse or pants. As a wearer of these pieces, you kind of not feel like you personally are on the spotlight, but the pieces are. And this is something I love extremely about this brand, uh, that the pieces speak for themselves and that they do not require my identity or I don't know, my styling or something um, to live. They have their existence on their own. Um, they speak their own language and they, they are like, independent pieces that speak for themselves and you wear them and just bring them to life you know i mean this sounds pretty awkward but this is kind of my way of dressing myself also but i feel like a item needs to be strong enough to stand on its own if you can say it like that and this is something um very striking in the designs um, of the mayas that they uh, create pieces that are so strong and this is something I also saw at Phoebe Philo at Celine, for example, that are so strong that they do not require any more imagination, any more inspiration uh, in terms of styling or wearing them. They just speak for themselves and that's it. And you don't need anything else because they are that strong. And this is something um, extremely cool. I mean, what else uh, could a person want? I mean, I think what is very distinct here um, at the Mayas is that they usually work on a very basic form, you know, it's not that they revolutionized a certain cut or something. It's still pants, we still have blouses and outerwear, 
but it seems like they work deeper and deeper in a certain way uh, and this is something I love about the brand. Um, it is so extremely textured that sometimes you have problems wearing it. To round this whole thing up, I want to talk with you um, about the craftsmanship of two pieces that I got uh, that I can only recommend and that are incredible. Um, and to have a closer look also on what exactly makes the difference here, what exactly is the quality. And maybe this helps you to compare it with other designers you also have that are maybe just as good or yeah, well you will just realize what kind of differences there can be. So let's have a closer look. I don't need a partner. I have this dress. You I don't need dress. anything like books, but a dress. And I yeah. have the first piece now. So this is the first piece that I have in my hands right now and um, I have issues with touching this dress. You know, it's, it really feels like it, sh it shouldn't be touched. Um, I will show you now in detail how it looks like, but in general, we have a dress here that is sleeveless, had a it has a pretty deep um, v-neck, uh, but classical uh, Jill Zander style. It is not made to look uh, yeah, very feminine or sexy in any kind of way. It has the subtle masculine but feminine cut on the front and on the back. And you have the zip on the back to wear it easily. And also here, I mean, you see that? So if we have a closer look now, I don't know if you really can tell what the fabric is like. I try to make it as clear as possible. But this is some kind of very stiff wool fabric and it has just a little bit of... It has some rayon in it which should make it... Um, I don't know what the purpose is actually, but maybe it's to make it a bit more flexible since as you can see, you know, my couch is smoother. If you, if you just compare it, it has this felt like feeling, so it really feels like um, you know it's fellow something, but it's actually wool and it feels like it's cooked wool uh, because it's very um, stiff. And here you have these very sharp darts, um, uh, which are made to make it, it look a bit more sculptured and um, yeah, you know, a little bit architectural again. You will see it on the also, oder ich play das jetzt vielleicht auch drüber. Um, you can see it when it's worn that it has not this very natural uh, look and feel. But, you know, the dress is kind of floating on your body. Um, this could also be because I just ordered one size up. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to um, be the look of it. Uh, you know, it just feels like the dress shouldn't be on yourself. And it looks extremely elegant in my opinion. You know, this is like the purest form of elegance to me and something again extremely cool about this is the inlay i mean what the hell please have a look at that um it's extremely well made it's again a different textile and i think this is a jazanda uh, self-made textile because they also have other pieces where they where they use this um pattern and um this fabric in their pre-fall 19 collection i think and as you can see the slit on the back is in the middle and on the front part it is, you know, like, it is like a two-third of it. So this is again something very subtle but uh, extremely impressive in my opinion because I like a side slit a lot. 
and I think it's cool that they did something different on the back of it. I know some of you guys are kind of annoyed, but she's extremely good in terms of tailoring and also couture tailoring, even it's if it, even though it's not her profession at all. She's she's very well aware of all these um, techniques and knows it better than I do actually. And then this is something that has been really uniquely created for the owner, only herself, and I think this really speaks to to the self-sufficiency of the modern women. This is really just, cre has been created just for you. Like no one necessarily has to see it, but this intricate lining, oh my God. This has really required some architectural design to fit everything properly in here. And it's a beautiful fabric. There's some natural fibers in there. It really makes my heart <sighs> yeah. jump a little bit. And then in there you have all these beautiness. Oh, make some opera dramatic mm. music in the background. No, it's really gorgeous. And then just to see that you're basically having this, this type of really well matched um, design in the interior, just as well as in the exterior. This is really some features of um, designer clothing that I really do appreciate, where you really get some something for your. For your money and not only a logo that was printed in huge letters in the front yes. i approve so long story short it's a pretty ass cool dress and yeah, um next time we'll, we'll get a basketball star to wear it so you can see the full thing yeah thing. even though i'm not that sure where i will wear it i will definitely find an occasion and i'm a person who can wear this in the summer and i think you can wear it in the winter with a turtleneck underneath also and a blazer over it because it's Technically, it's it's something for the winter time anyway. And you sit on your couch and watch TV. You can just put it on. Yeah, I mean you can even have a blanket. You can just so use it beautiful. as a blanket, so it's pretty nice. Okay, yeah, and that's the piece. So coming to the next piece, uh, which is something a little more practical, I would say. And uh, well, in general, I do not care if it's practical or not. When I buy fashion pieces that I love. I just buy them because I really love them and it really doesn't happen too often that I love something insanely and that I can also buy it for example. So this is a pants and as I said I'm an insane pants person, um, I mean imagine half of my wardrobe uh, pants now and this is like pretty sick. Um, but I just love them and it's something very practical that I wear most often and I'm not a jeans person so anyway this is a pair of pants and it's beige uh, this is sorry the last piece was fall 19 and this is pre-fall 19 so it completely different collection I have to say look at the resort and pre-fall collections at Josanda because usually uh, I like them a little bit more. Okay, we're back at it. This is the pants. You don't see anything. I will make close-ups now again. this stripe on the front which is pretty unusual and not very often to be seen on other designers and it again has this very architectural 
a graphic on it well the stripe is not a usual you know it's not the usual pinstripe that we used to see it, it looks pretty funny when worn and i really like the appearance again we have a fabric that is very stiff and very unusual in terms of um, pants so it does its job so it seems like a very generic pants maybe but i have to say in comparison to my hand it is a pretty wide pant you know it is wide and I don't know how practical it is, but I will test it. And if you open it, you know... Um, oh, another leg. Another leg. This is wow, a big surprise. Two legs. Something I haven't been uh, yeah. expecting. Easier than my project. Two legs only. <laughs> yeah, and if we look again at the inlay and how it's made. Oh. I mean, it's again beautiful. It, this is actually brown. It seems a bit black-like, but it's mm. a brown beige ba um, pant. And again, the and inlay. Zone. Yeah. Hand soon. Yeah, it looks like hands on him finishes beautiful. And the inlays, yeah, they yeah. blended like you know that so they yeah. should have a piping. Oh, that's so beautiful. This is something they make just to impress us, or does it have a certain purpose actually? You know, it's this pipe. Really, or... just so you can go over it and caress it and say you're beautiful. I love. No, <laughs> really. <laughs> so this is like pure tailoring, you know. Yeah. And then those cotton linings, some more. Bias binding here, just they to give a you lot some of contrast. These. That's really difficult to sew. So these are the two pieces that I got, and um, just to make this clear, I'm not an insane shopper. I would say, you know, I get something maybe once a month, maybe something every two months, and I'm really somebody who's observing a lot, and I can only recommend you to observe the market of designer clothing a lot to get the pieces um, you like the most. I mean, for example, these two, two pieces I had in my wardrobe, uh, my wish list for a very long time. And I have to say, I pulled the trigger and now I have to give uh, props to London Girl in New York City because as I said, I mean, it's creepy. I have these things now on my wish list for I think about a year and then I see her wearing it. Like, I don't know, the whole collection, um, That that's what I felt of a pre-fall to uh, 2019 I think and I see it on her and then I'm just like bought it basket you know and I was waiting for it the whole year and I got a discount on that day create wish lists is the most important thing and I used to be that person that got annoyed so quickly by wish lists and all these emails that you get but if you really want to buy something sooner or later it helps you a lot and I hope that you liked the pieces and maybe you can also find them still online um, as I said, it's a 2019 piece, so you probably, if you search a little, can still find them. And I hope you also like this kind of content. Um, as I said, I'm not the biggest unboxing fan, but, but I always think it's important to maybe share um, the experience I have with the pieces and what I think makes them incredibly unique. Uh, in this way so and do not forget to subscribe if you like this video or like my recent videos and see you to the next one it, no I'm, I'm, I'm cu cutting out